Carry and Tommy about to go off. Carry and Tommy know that the best stories start in the great outdoors. Ready for your next camping adventure but don't own a caravan? Camplify has you covered with thousands of caravans and camper vans ready to hire across Australia. Book today at camplify.com.au. And Tommy Little. This is Carrie and Tommy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, welcome to it for your Wednesday afternoon. How are we going, guys? You can come into work earlier than need be. No, no. Why? Because I, I got in early. No, you don't. True. <laughs> Actually, maybe it's a good thing I came in early today because yeah. I've been listening to old stuff from our show. Have you? Yeah, we were trying to find one thing and it ended up in a deep dive. Um, what do you got? Well, I found the funniest bit of audio. You always say um, that my mum loves you. Got a great relationship with my mum. And I found and a bit vice of audio. Versa, thank you very much. I found a bit of audio. We must have interviewed her on air about, so I think it was about her adopting um, her rescue dog, Ruby. Oh, it wasn't about when I asked her if she'd hooked up with Mark Holden. Remember that? You oh, were that outraged. was a lot too. Yes. You were out Because she used to be in a play back in the day with Mark Holden, but you asked my mum outright whether she, mm-mm, with Mark Holden, it was too much. Had a touchdown. Anyway. Down. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's what he said. He used to listen, say when he was judging My mum is the happiest idol. person it's I've ever met. That's what he said on Idol. No, we're aware. <laughs> um, my mum's the happiest, most polite person you've ever met. This is her ending an interview <laughs> with you, I reckon maybe about like six years ago. Okay. Jenny, it's a pleasure as always. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's electric, isn't it? He's it is, so right? disappointed in you. Play it again. Jenny, it's a pleasure as always. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Maybe she was sad That's it was over. That's the sound I used to get as a teen- teenager if I'd okay. done the wrong thing. Okay. Okay, okay. Carrie. Okay. Okay. <laughs> because we've yes. got a big show coming up. Mm. Um, there's something that just says, what, what did you scrape out? Oh, my God, that's me. Mm. I scraped something out of something. It's disgusting, but almost like popping a pimple. It was so enjoyable, and I think other people are going to have scrape out things they want to talk Fun about. Fun time game is also coming up. we got cash on the line. 50K vacay your way yes. if you want to holiday overseas. But up next, oh. it's all anybody sure is talking about. David, David. David. What's he done? He's gone and had a secret baby. We're going to chat about it next. Carrie and Tommy. It's your Wednesday, Arvo. It's Carrie Bickmore and Tommy Little. Sure, it's the biggest showbiz news of the day because... I know. I'm just looking at Dave Grohl's Instagram now. Should we just play it? Mm. Is someone getting the best, the best, the best, the best? The other one, Jesse Boy. I've got another confession to make. <laughs> I have a child. To another woman who I plan on supporting Cause I'm a good guy but a bit of a bad guy as well You know what I mean, yeah Yep, quote from Dave on his Instagram Dave Grohl, Foo Fighters He said, I've recently become the father of a new baby daughter Born outside of my marriage I plan to be a loving and supportive parent to her I love my wife and my children and I'm doing everything I can to regain their trust and earn their forgiveness. We're grateful for your consideration towards all the children involved as we move forward together. He's been through a bit. Poor Dave Grohl. (laughs) He has. (laughs) Look at the look on Gary's face. Am I not allowed to say that? He's had a lot he's had a lot happen in his life. He has. Yeah, I just feel sorry for him. We're not allowed to no? Okay. (laughs) <laughs> it's an interesting what? day to take that. Stance. Why? Why? What? What am I? Sorry. Two things what's can ha- be true at happened? once. No, I just think that that that. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> I reckon his wife cares that he's had mm-hmm. a tough time. <laughs> Don't reckon. <laughs> I was reading today. It's about the same timing, though. How do you know when it is? Because oh, because just it had was the nine baby? months ago. Yeah, which was when his band member yeah. died. Yeah, I was reading um, some of the. Sorry, other I'm not saying it's okay. I'm just saying he's had a lot. That have fathered kids outside of their marriage. Sorry. I didn't realise. So sorry. Taylor died two years ago. Did he? 
That's a bit of time. (laughs) Eddie Murphy, he has 10 kids to five women. And I had no idea that after a messy breakup, Eddie Murphy publicly denied being the father of Scary Spice, Mel B's daughter, Angel. The little girl was born in 2007. And then the paternity test proved that he was, in fact, the father. God, he's had a good girl. poor little girl. (laughs) I mean, your dad say it's not me. Simon Cowell, he surprised the world with news that he was going to be a baby daddy in 2013, uh, not with his wife. Simon um, Cowell hasn't had that much going on, has he? Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, yeah, I forgot that one. That one that was when he had a baby with his the staffer who worked with him in 2010. His maid, yes. His maid. That's a thorough queen, isn't it? <laughs> Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris found out that he had fathered a child in 1991 because she wrote him a letter. But at the time she wrote him the letter, she was 26 years old. So that whole, I don't know whether she'd only just found out or whether she'd only just decided to write the letter to Chuck. That'd be so hard being the child, like being that secret child. And so often you wouldn't be told, you wouldn't know that, that your story. Yeah. Yeah. I feel I've missed it from the start. I don't don't really know how to get back on what, what, what would you like to do? Why don't we speak to secret children? Is there anyone listening now that you found out later in your life mm. that how you came to be was not how you thought you came to be? Yeah. And what that's meant for your life, what that's meant for your relationship with your family? 131060, are you the secret child? Gary and Tommy. Coming up a little bit later on, we've got a $50,000 vacay you could win. And you just have to listen out to figure out what song you are listening out for. Right right now, now. we're talking about David Grohl. He's announced that he's become a father to a baby girl um, born outside of his marriage. He said he loves his family. He's going to do everything he can to regain their trust and earn their forgiveness. But we were talking about secret children because there were a lot of celebrities over the years that have had secret children. Harry, are you one or are you the one that had the secret child? No, I'm one of the secret children. When did you find out, Harry? Uh, so I found out, um, I was always told that my dad had to move away for his job as a little fella because my mum was protecting me. Yeah. Um, but when I was about 17 or 18, I found out that he was actually quite a colourful person um, in the Melbourne underworld. Whoa. Uh-huh. Um, did- and so then the story came out that mum actually had to flee Geelong because he didn't want to have a kid. Um, and so I didn't... I grew up not knowing anything until, yeah, until I met him at about 18. So you chose um, to meet we'll, him or did they, was it thrust upon you? How did you come to meet him? Um, we randomly ran into my stepmother at a funeral, which just like total coincidence. Um, and then I thought she was cracking on to me. So I was like, you know, thinking I'm top shit. And um, then the next day my mum come into me and goes, oh, you know, that's actually your stepmother. I was like, whoa, massive. Um, so then I started talking to her on Facebook, then slowly got started talking to my father, eventually got to meet him and um, became friends for a little bit. And then probably a year later, he dropped the bombshell on me that I had a sister that was nine months younger than me. Oh, and so you, your whole life you never knew you had a sibling? Yeah, I never knew I had a sibling until, yeah, I was 19. And have you met her and, now? Um, I, yeah, I've met her now. Me and her get along really well. We don't really speak to our father anymore. Oh, that's so um, sad, though, that you didn't get to have your childhood with her. Yeah, it sucks a little bit. Yeah. Um, we're so, still both convinced that there's a third one out there. Really? Yeah, everything happens in threes. Um, well, you're using it. I was going to say, can we put the call out there, but you're using a fake name, aren't you, Harry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. using a fake name. Just I don't want it too much backlash because, yeah. Of course, I don't think we need course. to make it more complicated no, for you, Harry. Not. <laughs> No, but the temptation to put out the call there ain't, ain't half bad, eh? <laughs> I know. Well, you can never um, think about that and call us back if you decide you want to go down that route. But, yes, it must be interesting awesome, living life you. knowing that there's maybe another sibling out there that you don't know about. Carrie, if the- Yeah, well, it was, it was pretty confronting. I think, I think the most confronting part was when, um, when my mum handed me the, the book that um, Underbelly, the TV show, was written off and my dad was on the front cover of it. That was a real groundbreaker for me. It's a um. Uh, uh, Carrie, is this the world you want to get involved in when you said to Harry to give us a call back if he wants to put the call out? <laughs> Maybe not. I was just trying to help Harry out. It could be. Uh, anyone, thank you, Harry. G'day, Ben. Uh, yeah, g'day. How, how are we going? Yeah, pretty good. How are you? Um, not too bad. Uh, um, we're talking about some secret um, 
family business. Sorry, uh, I should I have guess. done. I should have done that for you, Ben. That is my job. We are talking about some secret family business. Are you the secret child, Ben? Uh, I'm one of two. Yes, uh, we grew up um, around Australia, and um, just me, my sister, and my, my great dad. Who um, and we got told a story that basically mum had passed away, and um, which was sort of a bit bummy, but we got on with life. And um, the, um, on my 30, around my 31st birthday, I got reunited courtesy of Channel 10 doing uh, Long Lost Family. They right. found our missing mother. Oh. Was that, how, how was that experience for you, Ben? Did it give you a bit of kind of um, closure? Uh, yes. Um, Mum sort of did, described it as an anchor that she'd been carrying around for a long time. Yeah. And um, yeah, you, it was uh, great. It did you, did you get along? Up. Did you get along, Ben? I did. Yes, um, my sister that I grew up with uh, didn't. A um, little bit of negativity, but um, sort of understandably, she of didn't course. have a mother and uh, figure in her life. Mm. Um, <laughs> and me being, yeah, the male that grew some. Um, <laughs> Oh, but I really didn't get along with women. To, I couldn't understand women um, too well, um, courtesy of not having a mother figure in my life. So, Are you, um, Do you understand them better now, Ben? Uh, I, I think I'm still figuring them out. But, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm turning 40. Um, I've, yeah, I've got a wicked partner that I've been with for like six years. So, um, you know, um, big shout out to Lisa there. Yeah, um, good look after her, Ben. Yeah. Good on you, Ben. On you. you know, we 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 have sort of got yeah, life yeah. together, but um, yeah, it was uh, definitely a shock. Um, I bet. So. Well, I bet. good on you, Ben, and all the best for you and Lisa. Thank you. G'day, Beck. Hi, how are you guys? We are in a whole whirlwind of information here. Are we, we're talking um, secret children. Are you are you a secret child? Not technically. No, I'm actually an unsecret child. How does that? Well, tell me more. My mum had me, this is the late seventies. Yep. My mum had me when she was out of, not married. Um, they got married a year later. Mm-hmm. My dad as the male, um, wanted of his course custody as well. So she had to put me up for adoption. My dad was able then to adopt me. And as his wife, she was able to have custody of me too. So. So your biological dad? My biological parents are my adoptive parents on paperwork. I have the paperwork. Oh. I don't they, understand. I'm a bit so, sorry. So why did they have to put you up for adoption? Because they weren't married? Because they weren't married. This is how the Australian government worked, yeah, back in the 70s. So if you weren't married and you had a kid, you had to put them up for adoption? Yes, if you wanted, yeah. What? She was just the mere male. Oh, sorry, she was just the mere female. So she, in order for my dad to have yeah any say over me, she had to put me up for adoption, and then as his wife, she too could have custody of me. That was the only way they could both get have custody God. of me. Isn't it wild, Beck? Because you hear like I, I'm listening to the story and I'm like, wow, this must have been you know a hundred years ago. But I'm speaking to <laughs> someone pretty much my same age. Yeah, um, and I actually know somebody who they had to do a quick marriage in their um, teens. To avoid this, and that was into the eighties. Wow, that was oh, still thanks going for on. Calling back, yeah. So and how, how has it impacted your life in any way now as an adult? Oh, I throw it around a lot. <laughs> like I'm adoptive, I go find my real parents and my siblings. Yeah, I'm just like when they are an aunt. <laughs> Good on you, Beck. Carrie and Tommy. New Wednesday, Arvo. It's Carrie Bigmore and Tommy. Little and one pass weekend is coming. Don't miss big deals from Kmart, Target, Catch, Bunnings Warehouse, Office Works, and Priceline Pharmacy. After years of never taking a side, uh, Taylor Swift has finally come out post the Trump. Um, Carmela debate to say who she will be voting for. I'll tell you a bit later in the show. Ooh, because now before the show, you were digging through some um, old audio. Oh my God, I found that audio of my mum saying goodbye to you in a phone call on mm. this show and she was not impressed. Okay. <laughs> yes, that's what she gave me. I said, it's such a pleasure to chat, Jenny. Okay. <laughs> it's so Honestly, good. Honestly, a disapproving, okay. Jenny, we've got to do this more often. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I, I realise why that might have been. Why? Because we got some of the audio from that chat. Mm. 
And it was the um, the question which I think shocked you more than it. it Do you need? Does people need the context for this? Uh, Is it the Mark Holden bit? Yeah, yeah. So she, mm. uh, uh, in her teenage years, mm. acted alongside Mark Holden in mm. a show, and they had to have a peck, a little pash. And then you went and asked my mum something highly inappropriate. Did you root Mark Holden? <laughs> oh my God, Tommy! Well, I Tommy, can you not ask? You can't that? ask my mum that. <laughs> oh, Hopefully, we have not put Mark Holden off. <laughs> no, that'll make him come. With your line of I questioning, mean, not, you know. <laughs> sorry, oh, I got out bad. Was, oh, no wonder she was like, okay, okay, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Carrie and Tommy. Carrie and Tommy. The Wednesday Arvo, it is Carrie Bickmore and Tommy Little for the drive home. So yesterday we were talking about uh, parenting tips and I gave you uh, the parenting tip I'd seen online that some parents feed their kids dinner at 3.30 after school when they're starving mm. and that way they don't snack and they eat their whole dinner and then they give them the snack they would have had after school at night when yep. they're hungry. Anyway, after that, when we are in the break, we got on to talking about high chairs. Somehow I was talking about how I thought the Ikea one was the best high chair. And then we started talking about the food that collects in high chairs. Did you? And I'll never forget when I handed over a high chair to one of our producers, Belle here, I gave her one of my high chairs when she had her little bub and I tried to clean it out before and I'm sure I didn't do a perfect job of it. But the satisfaction of getting a bobby pin and scraping out old food from the crevices of the high chair was equal parts vomit worthy and yeah, equal parts so incredibly when you're doing satisfying. It, it's the best. But when you talk about it to anyone, it is. Are you telling me that it's sounding disgusting? No, it's but like I know disgusting. that exact feeling. Well, it had congealed there for, Ugh. you know, four years or three years or whatever. Mm. And it get, goes hard. And it's oh. all all sorts of food is gathered in there. It's a whole meal. I also think because it's your <laughs> kids, it's okay. Yeah, it's that is true. true. It's a bit of that. Just yeah. doing a random. Yeah. But then we started talking about things that are really satisfying to scrape out. And uh, web oh. guy Eli was saying, um, your AirPods, the little hole in the uh. AirPods <laughs> with all your ear, ear gunk. Oh. I've, got, <laughs> I've got one that's not gross. What's yours? It's so satisfying. My fire has a like a glass screen on it and I spray it with oven cleaner when it gets all black and I spray it with oven cleaner and then wipe it clean. And seeing the crystal glass oh. Oh, yeah. is a I real you said joy. you didn't do chores the other day. That's a chore. Thank you. Not if you love it. That's true. That's, That's the same true. thing if you do that in your um, shower. If you oh, the squeegee, get the squeegee yeah. in your shower. Oh, can, I, can I give you a really gross two one? Seconds, but yeah. yes. So I had a blocked ear, and it was I could feel that it was so blocked, full of wax, but just in like where I couldn't get to it. And I bought a twenty dollar inner ear camera off Amazon. And it connects to your phone and you can see, and it has like a little shovel on the end of it. Oh, this is, is making me kind of vomit. Yeah. It's so disgusting. I've seen, I've seen videos yes. of, of professionals and you, doing And you carved it. it out. You put it in and you just take the, dig the stuff out and then all of a sudden you can hear again and it oh was my God. the best. You're, Have you ever done ear candling or whatever that thing is? Where I've you, done ear uh, candling. Does it work? Um, no. So Sorry. My first thing is no, and I actually think because they always you do it, and then people go look at all the stuff that came out. But if you and I think it's just from the smoke because if you burn them without putting it in your ear, it all goes black. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The other thing is like Nintendo or we like the um the devices, the controllers. controllers, If you dig out all the (gasps) because people eat and play and game, and it all just falls into the. You know what I've just? Oh, what? You are. Oh my God! He said Eli's saying it's dead skin that that falls off as you're using the. That's what I remember reading somewhere, and this probably isn't true now they're going to say, but I I remember reading that that's what the majority of dust around your house is. Oh, yeah, dead true. Skin dead skin follicles. 131060, yes. what do you love scraping out? Pretty mm. gross, but fun. Call us. Carrie and Tommy. A few Wednesday, Arvo. It's Carrie Bickmore and Tommy Little. Right now we're asking on 131060, what did you scrape out? We're talking about like the crevices of a high chair yeah. or your earbuds. Yeah, you love it because. Oh, mad so boy. satisfying. Chloe, what have you scraped out? So it's also pretty gross, just like the high chair, but underneath your, like an electric stove top, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. underneath the crevices around the edges, you'd be surprised to see what's under there (laughs) but I have done it every time I clean it I usually get a skewer and dig it all out and (laughs) 
so gross. But it's, it's so, so gross, but so satisfying, isn't it? <laughs> Chloe, yeah. you know what I've just realised? This is what? in a similar vein where you don't realise there's gunk there and then it seems yeah. to be a never-ending supply. Do you ever wash your car and do the spray hose thing yourself? Sometimes, um, but I'm a bit lazy when it comes to Because <laughs> I realise that where my boot like goes, so where the back windscreen meets the boot, if you get the pressure hose under there and give it a good spray, leaves oh, yeah. and dirt. Oh. And, and it mm. honestly never ends. Actually, it must be what it feels like. I've never done this, but to clean out the gutters. I thought you were going to say to have a colonic. No, actually, I saw that the other day. Someone wow. have a, having they, just watching no, through the window. On Instagram, what you, what, what they were having you, a what colonic. Instagram? What's your feed? <laughs> they were having a colonic because they had some bug from Bali. They had some um, what's it called, a giardia or something. So they were having a colonic, and you could see all. Anyway, it was <sighs> hectic. We have very different algorithms. I've thought about getting one. I've had lots of colonoscopies, but I've never had one while I'm awake. <laughs> they, they do say they're very Moorish. <laughs> <laughs> Leanne, what did you scrape out? Oh, okay. I can top it all. Yeah. This, this, this one all, yeah. So I, I very rarely ever take out my studs in my ears. Yeah. You know, they, I change my earrings, but the studs just stay there. But if you've got to take them out for an operation or anything and you yep. take off the little butterfly, you would not believe the crap that's in there oh. and you get a toothpick and you pick it all out yeah. and it absolutely stinks. <sighs> It stinks, Leanne. What are you doing with your hair and your ears? No, just well, the human just body smells. There. Well, because yeah. I have, so I have I a reaction every time I wear the non-real jewelry, and I wear like you know the costume jewelry often. <laughs> sorry, what? it's sorry. It's a funny. I've heard a very rich lady say to me once before, "I'm allergic to um to young wine," and it just well, sounds I'm very like that. To cheap I'm allergic jewelry. to fake jewelry, <laughs> but I wear it often, Leanne, and it often infects my ears. And when I finally take it out, there's a buildup of gunk in there, and then Ooh. I get the end of the earring and I scrape yeah. it all out. Oh, oh it feels it's so good. good. <laughs> good on you, Leanne. Sickos. Yeah, Stephanie. Stephanie. Hello. Are you a Hello. sicko too? I might be. Um, <laughs> I like to clean the drain and pull out the hair. Oh, I can't do it. No, that's, oh. that's it's, me done. Is it yours, no, it's Stephanie? It's got to come out. Look, I try not to put my hair down the drain, so I actually have a system um, where that doesn't happen. But How? What's your I'm system? Different. Well, my system is to, when I'm brushing my hair, pull the hair and stick it onto the wall. Um, so it doesn't, it doesn't fall down the drain. Well, if you've got a hair sticks, wall. In your shower, on the shower wall. you brush yeah. it and then you put it on against the wall and then you clean that off. Yes, then I pull it off the wall after because it doesn't all get caught in the brush. So Stephanie, a lot of it goes down the drain. Stephanie, how yeah. often do you leave the hair on the wall? Oh no! I so only when I'm only when I'm washing my hair, and then you've got to pull it off straight away because it is pretty gross for others to see. Because we lose a lot of hair, us girls. Yeah. Because our our producer Georgia here, she just said she does the same thing. Steph, do you oh, like wow. do you swirl it around Gosh. on the wall in like a little circle? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I do. <laughs> How funny! Jay, have you ever accidentally left yours there for days? All the time. And my girlfriend, um, after we got back from a doof or something, she went into the shower with off her boyfriend. A doof. She was like, oh, no. And he was like, what is that? And she's like, oh, that's Joe. <laughs> He'll call me Joe. They'll call you Joe. Joe, yeah. She's Blame like, oh, you. that's Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Carly, Carly, what do you scrape out? I'm not quite a scrape because it's gross. But um, my, when we were younger, we all had water beds. Um, and when, when they were hot, um, so we had to try and siphon the water out, whatever else, um, the amount of dead skin cells that was sitting around the frame and we had to clean that to either put a new bag in or just to get a regular bed. Um, yeah, disgusting. Whoa. Carly, I want to know more about growing up on a waterbed. Has it been good for your back or have you got a spongy spine now? Um, no, it was really good. I have a regular bed now. I do miss it sometimes, but it is quite hard to get in and out of it sometimes too. Oh, yeah. How often did they pop, Carly? Um, I think... Would they pop if you were having, um, if you were doing the do? Yeah, fun. yeah. Maybe. Um, sometimes they did, um, but I think mine only probably pops maybe twice in the like 
17 years I had one. Wow. Car- Carly, if you have a water bed, can you like get a setting that kind of moves it a bit? Do you know That's what I mean? Sorry, so like, no, you, know, you can't if you have to rock, rock you to sleep. sleep. So I'm going to need to hire a man to stand at the end yes. of the bed and jump up yes. and down on it every now and then. Yes. Okay, good to know. Yeah. <laughs> Carrie and Tommy. Yeah, that is where you're at for your Wednesday afternoon. Still plenty more to come, the Savo. We've got time game. We've got a oh. 50K vacay But right now, away. some concert tickets. I'm Chris. I'm Johnny. And I'm Guy. And we're from Coldplay. Coldplay's Music of the Spheres World Tour. Coming to Australia October and November 2024. Tickets and info at livenation.com.au. Let's get today's winner of these two tickets to see Coldplay on the line. Mia, are you there? (gasps) Yes. Mia, are you going to see Coldplay? Oh, my God. Thank you so much. How big a fan? Favourite song? Give it to us. Yellow, 100%. Favourite colour? Quick question. (laughs) <laughs> yes, definitely. Oh, also <laughs> yellow. Yeah, hundred percent. Who are you taking, Mia? Uh, probably my dad. Oh, that's cute—a yeah. dad-daughter date. Yeah, he got me into them. So, how did he get you into them? Off. Pardon? How, when, and how did he get you into them? What was the that pathway? Was like the only CDs he would play in the car. <laughs> wow, that's yes. cool. Have you seen them before, Mia? No, oh, so I literally cannot wait. Thank you so much. Well, I hope you, you and dad, your dad have the best time. Enjoy. Okay. Thank you so much. If you would like to win, head to carryandtommy.com.au. Coldplay's Music of the Spheres World Tour coming to Australia this October and November 2024. Guys, I can't believe I'm saying this, but up next, we've got to talk about Dubbo. It involves um, some, the, the story involves some Deros. <laughs> it involves um, one of the first female gangsters in Australia. What? And it involves far too much slander of a mm. town that I love. Carrie and Tommy. Carrie and Tommy. $1,300 is what the time game is worth today, and it is coming up very soon. Ooh, because I can't believe I'm saying these words, but we have to talk about Dubbo. So where in this beautiful big country is Dubbo? Uh, New South Wales. Mm-hmm. Um. I went from there to kind of in the in the middle, mm-hmm. and it's a beautiful part of the world. So I'm, I'm not very, coastal. Not coastal. No, mm-hmm. I am um, very big farming part of the world. I am um, very lucky. Oh, there we go. It is the intersection of Newell Mitchell and the Golden Highways. Well, you know what they told me when I was there. They said it's in the middle of like um, Melbourne to. Brisbane, they said they get all these intersections, oh. Canberra to Sydney. Ah. So all these people drive through, through Dubbo. Through Dubbo. And, and is there a reason people drive through Dubbo? Nah. It's, I, well, here's the thing. I don't think I've ever um, encountered in our beautiful country a place where the locals were so unenthusiastic about their own city. Oh. So – Often, yes, because often people will throw shade at a city, but those that live there are quite defensive. Yeah, this is the, the point I got to. I was walking down the main street and a few people stopped me. And usually one person will say this if I'm in a smaller town in, in, in Australia. Um, but every person said this. They said, what are you doing here? <laughs> right? <laughs> and by about the third one, <laughs> I finally said, I said, Dubbo's great. And she looked at me and she goes, are you joking? It's full of Deros. <laughs> and, and I said, no, Was it's, it? I said, no, it's not. And this is what she did. She goes, have a look. And then starts pointing him out. She goes, there's one. There's one. See him sitting on the bed. Oh, they're He's funny a people. She's funny. Very funny. And again, I think it's a beautiful part of the world. But this is how, how much they are, they are um, not into their own city. Right. Uh, there's a park. There's like stories of the town in the middle of the main street. And um, there's this is one that's called The Legend of Flash Kate's Casino. And oh. it says Kate Lee is probably Dubbo's most notorious daughter. She was born in 1881. Right. And she went on to um, move to Sydney and get into um, setting up illegal like pubs, because all the pubs would shut at five or six, whatever it was. And so she set up these illegal booze houses and became like a notorious gangster. Right. Very cool. But and the do judge, they claim fame to her? Well, that that's in the in the middle of the town, this story. Right. But the judge, um, she got she got caught uh, eventually in Sydney and she got told she could either leave Sydney yep. and um go back to Dubbo for five years yep. or she'd be locked up. Anyway, uh, what did she choose? Prison or Dubbo? Anyway, <laughs> a, a, anyway, a couple of months later, 
Um, she got found in Sydney and then got locked up. And this is what she said. When asked by the judge why she had returned to Sydney despite the danger, she is said to have replied, better dead than alive in Dubbo. <laughs> Oh and that's the story they put on the main go to street. Prison or just that's a risk story your the main life street. than be in Dubbo. I thought it was wonderful. And then they celebrate her. I, I think that's pretty good. It's pretty it's pretty Again, funny. they're pretty funny. Yeah. They're pretty they're funny. funny people. Yeah. Um You're born in Dubbo. Yeah, I'm born in Dubbo. So I'm how does best. that come to be? Because I th- I thought Don't you were know West why. Coast. Yeah, well, so my parents lived there for I think it was two years. It was just enough time to have my brother and then me, and then they moved home. And Mum did not like Dubbo, didn't she? No. See, I love Dubbo, and I think do you go back do. to your hometown often? I've been back once. I think we went there on a school trip in like year seven, and oh. it was because we were passing through like everybody yes. else on the way to Canberra or something. Yeah, yeah. Parliament House trip thirteen ten sixty. Um, I want to hear from, we broadcast in Dubbo. I want to hear from Dubbo residents. Tell us, are the few people I spoke to in Dubbo that really crap on Dubbo, are they right? Or is there sick bits of Dubbo that we need to know about? Give your town a pump up. Give us a call. Carrie and Tommy. Favourite song of someone related to the show. Oh, if you hear that coming out of my house, do not go in. <laughs> Johnny is doing the do. Don't be mad. Chicken, don't be. I can picture him dancing. It's gross. Uh, <laughs> We're talking Dubbo, though. We are Dubbo. talking Dubbo. I had the pleasure of going to Dubbo. I loved Dubbo. The locals are not so much. They don't love their own town. That was very disparaging. And then I saw a park in the middle of town in the main street that was about a notorious gangster from Dubbo who... Um, Hated it so much yeah, that she'd, she... She'd rather die in Sydney than live in Dubbo. <laughs> um, g'day, Michelle. Hi. Are you from Dubbo? I, uh, I wouldn't say from Dubbo. I grew up there. Yeah. Um, I was born in Sydney, sorry. No, that's that's okay. what I'm sticking to. Even though I'm a Westie. Oh, you didn't. When did you live in Dubbo? How long for? Um, three times I lived in Dubbo. It's like a black hole. It sucks you in and sucks life out of See, you. Gary, this is and the you locals. didn't like it? This is what I got hits no. of. Michelle, why is everybody there? It was beautiful when I was there. Yeah. <laughs> There's still beautiful people there. Yeah. But, yeah, no. No, yeah, no. No, no. no. All right, that's one mark, another mark okay. against Dubbo. What about Tony? Tony, you'd love Dubbo, surely. Born and raised, thank you guys, and thanks for having me. Good on you, Tone. Tell us some good things about Dubbo. Uh, well, sporting Mecca, hub of the West, uh, largest regional sounder, centre, I suppose, west of uh, the Blue Mountains yep. itself. Um, you know, we have a lot of people you know, coming to live in Dubbo now itself, so... Um, but that's a lot of, Tony, hold on, hold on. You're just giving us stats. No, but I so you're went, not telling me why to no love it. You're just telling me it's a big. Here. But there's I a, love my town. Tony, there's a beautiful pool there. Yep, Olympic it, pool. Yep. It, it was closed when I tried to go there, but it is beautiful. And there's, there was, I went for a run down by a river that was beautiful. Track O'Reilly track, yes. There you, you know, go. The uh, Aboriginal uh, policeman. There you go. There, see, there we go. The zoo. It's a zoo. Good. There's a zoo there as well. There was a great Indian restaurant I went to. Oh, oh glad you like that. <laughs> <laughs> Again, not good all good things time. in Dubbo. G'day, Rach. Hello. Um, Rach, are you from Dubbo? So I grew up about half an hour away in a town called Wellington. Yep. And when we were growing up, Wellington, we were the Darrows and Dubbo was the big smoke. Oh, funny. Big smoke. And where do you live? Do you live in Dubbo now? No, so I'm out in Orange now. So, yeah, about, about an hour away. Um, beautiful, beautiful city. You know what I got told about Orange when I was in Dubbo? <laughs> that, that, they told me that's where all the hipsters go. Yeah, we're up ourselves out here. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie and Tommy. The Wednesday Arbo, it's Carrie Bickmore and Tommy Little, all thanks to Camplify.com.au. So good. If you're dreaming of a road trip or a camping mm. getaway but you don't have a caravan, it's totally fine. Just go to Camplify and hire one. Yeah, they've got the widest range of vans, caravans, camper vans, motorhomes and camping trailers. And there's options. You can tow, drive, deliver, or you can have it set up for you. I'm going to tell you about the Trump Taylor Swift sitch up Oi. very, very soon. Oi. It's the best competition in radio. This is the best competition you've ever had. Oh, my God, yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> 
The Time Game Jackpots Weekly. Oh, mate, you make our dreams come true. All you need to do is say stop. Stop. When exactly five seconds is up this week, the jackpot is up to... $1,300. Carrie and Tommy's Time Game. That is not money to sneeze at. Is that the saying, Carrie? It's absolutely the saying. Ellie, would you sneeze at 1300 bucks? Uh, the bottle I would love me. The yeah, bottle I would love you. That's a great way to spend it. Um, <laughs> you, you know what to do. Uh, Jesse here is going to say start. You say stop. If it's exactly on five seconds, you win the cash. Are you ready to play? Yes. Start. Stop. Felt oh, good straight out of the gates. Well, you've put so much Botox into our furry friend's face here that I have no it's idea. It's hard to get any expression from him anymore. Give, give, me, sh- give me shocked. Short. Give me shocked. I can't. Okay. Was give... that shocked? Hold on. No. Nothing. Nothing. Just nothing. No. I was really no. trying there as well. And can you cry anymore or have your tear ducts been drained? No, I could never cry. But that's just because it's got no soul. Mm. That's Who, a must genetic not have a soul? Mummy. <laughs> How did Ellie go? Hang on, I want to hear more about it. We've got to get on with it. Five yeah. point. That's a good start. Three zero. Oh. Oh, one mm. dead. Let's see. How many more? Give us a call if you want to play. Carrie and Tommy. Carrie and Tommy. If you Wednesday, Arvo. It is Carrie Bickmore and Tommy Little. Time, time, oh, bye. Banana, banana, oh, bye. Be bye, oh, bye. Time, dang. Carrie and Tommy. Time game. One Pass Weekend is coming soon with deals from Kmart, Target, Catch, Bunnings Warehouse, Officeworks, and Priceline Pharmacy. Start building your wish list today. 1300 bucks on the line, Becca. Chloe, how does that sound? Yeah, that sounds pretty good to me. Do you want to get straight to it, babe? Ah, uh, sure. Let's go for it. I mean, if you want to chat, we can. Ah, oh, no, let's just go to it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> oh. What? Chloe doesn't want to chat. Nah, she just Sorry, wants to Sorry, Tommy. I've been talking all day at work. Yeah, just give her the money. <laughs> but, money. but I've got thoughts. Maybe you could just listen, Chloe. Okay, give me give me a couple of your thoughts quickly. Well, quickly. Here's, <laughs> <laughs> I'm under pressure now. Here's the thing that I've never understood about ladybugs. Why are they called ladybugs? Are there more female ones or are they different colorings to the male ones? Because there's yellow ones, but there's also red ones. And the red ones are the only ones I've heard referred to as ladybugs. What are the yellow ones? Not I don't know. They're just beetles. Are they boy I don't bugs? Know. Or are they the male bugs? Chloe, are you still fascinated or you want to win the money? I think let's go to the money. Yeah, okay. Mm. We're going to pass you over to Jesse. you got to say stop at five seconds. Passing you over to Jesse now. Stop. Stop. <sighs> Sorry, it was hard. I was thinking about ladybugs. Yeah. I didn't notice how long the time went. Um, I've got actually an answer for you here oh, because okay, not now. the name Lady- ladybug mm. uh, traces back to when European farmers would pray to Virgin Mary to prevent their crops from being destroyed by pests. Oh, I didn't know you had to pray to Virgin Mary for that. But hold on, that hasn't <laughs> answered your yellow versus red beetle question. No, that's not on the laptop I've been handed. Okay. <laughs> How did <laughs> Chloe go, Jesse? 6.03. Uh, I reckon he threw off with the ladybug chat. She die. would have got that on. She's died never knowing the truth. Well, you did just bore her with the truth. Charlie. It was boring, Charlie. Hi, how are you? Pretty good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Here's something for you, Charlie. I think your name is better as a girl's name than a boy's name. Ooh. Thank you. I don't get that very much. Usually mm. people say it's a dog's name. Oh. That's, it's oh. a great <laughs> dog's name. Well, so that's horrible, though, that they say that you've got a dog's name. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> what? I... <laughs> I was just about to say, I say the same thing to my friend Fido all the time. It doesn't make any sense. Um, Charlie, are you ready to win some cash? Yes, I am. Start. Stop. Charlie, if you if you get it bang on five seconds, you win $1,300. As you know, if you do not, you plummet to your untimely death. Can you do me a favour? And if you don't, can you please um like make dog noises as you fall? Okay. Okay, but I hope you win, Charlie. Let's find out. For 1300 bucks, how did Charlie go? 6.10. Oh. <laughs> Good on you, Charlie. <laughs> what about Matt? Hey, Matt. Hey, you going? Yeah, good. We've been chatting too much. We're just going to play. Does that suit you? Oh, I've got a question. Oh, it suits me fine. I've got a question. Oh, you know what? How about I'll go along with your books. We'll scrap playing and I'll just win. 
Ooh, yeah. that's interesting, Maddie. Interesting, Maddie, isn't like it? That. Maddie, you're from the Lockyer Valley, is that correct? Oh, that is correct. Is it named after Darren? The Lockyer Way is named after Darren, but oh. the actual Lockyer Valley is not. Oh, okay. Good to know, though. Good to know. Um, are you ready to play? <laughs> I am ready to play. Start. That Did felt you, real good. I've got to give Maddie. I didn't feel great to me, Carrie. The Lockyer Valley is named after Major Edmund Lockyer, a British soldier and explorer. Did you hear the yeah, birds in the back of Maddie's know, call? How beautiful. What, bird, what birds were going on in the background there, Maddie? I believe that same person named it Plainlands and Lately. <laughs> how did Matt go? 5.10. Ooh. <sighs> Time for one more. Monique. Hey, Monique. Yay! Ooh, don't be too up and about, Monique. The bodies are piling up down there. <laughs> That's all right. Look, something soft landing. Yeah, it's true, Monique. That is true. I like your attitude. Are you ready, ready to win 1300 bucks? Yes, yes, I am. Start. Stop. <sighs> oh, my gosh. That's the most expression. Now he uses his mouth for the expression because he can't use his forehead. No, that's because you and gave him went, filler in his lips. And it just went <sighs> like that. Why would Ooh. you? Why, yeah, I know, Why Monique. would you give a ferret filler? But how good does he look? <laughs> why wouldn't you give a ferret filler? Yeah. That's true, See, Monique, actually, that's Monique. Monique. filler. You've really. <laughs> how did Monique go? <gasps> oh, my God. Oh, Monique, we haven't had this in a while. Really? I'm out, oh of, my God. I'm out of my chair, Monique. Monique, the ferret never plays this music underneath unless we're very, very, very close. This music? What's what's tension bed? Whatever you want to call it. Oh my God, the suspense. <laughs> Have you ever been in a tension bed? Anyway, let's find out how Monique went for thirteen hundred bucks. Five. Oh, that's great. Point. Yes, we just need to hear two zeros here, Monique. Zero. That's one of them. Oh my God. Seven. <laughs> Oh, oh, she died with a laugh. Oh, oh well. <laughs> Carrie and Tommy. You Wednesday, Arvo. It is Carrie Bickmore and Tommy Little for the drive home. Uh, Donald Trump and Kamala ha- Harris have had their uh, first presidential debate. Did you also know it's the first time they've met? What? Yeah, I watched them um, go up, no. and she introduces herself, and he shakes her hand. And wouldn't, um, they had never oh met. Oh my god! Before. I just realised they would have met at the handover when they do that ceremony from the previous president to the new one. But I'm assuming he wasn't there because he didn't. Because it was Biden. But I don't think they even no, do. No, it. but like they, the vice president would be there as well. But they, he probably wouldn't have been there because he didn't think that the result was uh, legit. Well, well he right? would, his people were too busy storming the Capitol. That's right. Oh, um, I see what you're saying. Yes. Yeah. I didn't even know they did a handover. Yeah, they've got a big ceremony like everything in America. Yeah, okay. But yes, they, they had never met before. I found that fascinating. That is fascinating. And um, the... By all accounts, um, he won, but it depends what articles you read, what websites you go to. All of his supporters would have said he won, of course, all of hers, hers, but most of the moderates are saying that she absolutely wiped the Oh, that the she floor. won. Yeah. Right. Sorry that she won. Yes. Um, he. One of the questions, of course, was about um, Kamala Harris's... Uh, Racial identity, which he made an issue of, and the moderator asked about it. Why do you believe it's appropriate to weigh in on the racial identity of your opponent? I don't, and I don't care. I don't care what she is. I don't care. Uh, You make a big deal out of something, I couldn't care less. Whatever she wants to be is okay with me. But those were your words, so I'm asking... I don't know. I don't know. I mean, all I can say is I read where she was not black, that she put out, and I'll say that, and then... I read that she was black, and that's okay. Either one was okay with me. That's up to her. Um, so like most of his things, he's not really stating anything new other than that. Just now he doesn't down. Well, now he doesn't care. <laughs> like most things, yes. So while the vibe is uh, that Kamala won the debate, there's been a lot of public support from celebrities coming out uh, for both of them. I didn't realise Olivia Rodrigo was a big Kamala Harris fan, George Clooney, John Legend, rapper Cardi B. Um, she is massively into Car- Kamala Harris. Beyonce agreed to have her song used, Freedom, in one of Kamala Harris's videos. Right. Uh, in terms of the Trump camp, Hulk Hogan, Elon, massive Trump fan. Elon Musk is a pretty big one. Elon Musk, Kid Rock. 
Mm. They're all the ones you'd expect, aren't they? <laughs> There's no well, one there that you're like, cent. What? Yeah, 50 cent. Oh, but I like right? I liked 50 cent's reasoning because it was honest. He said, I like guns and I like money. And the Republicans get me more of both. Oh, well, hmm. at least he's being honest. I agree. Someone who has been honest today is Taylor Swift. For many, many years, she's refused to announce who she would be backing or really get political at all. And she's come out today saying, like many of you, I watched the debate tonight. Recently, I was made aware that AI of me falsely endorsing Donald Trump's presidential run was posted to his site. It brought me to the conclusion that I need to be very transparent about my actual plans for this election uh, as a voter. I will be casting my vote for Kamala Harris, which is huge for her because years ago in her Miss Americano doco that I watched, mm. there's a scene in it where she's sitting around with her dad, her security team and her mum, and they're trying to say to her, you can't come out and say that you don't support Trump. And she's saying, I have to, I can't stand here and allow people to think that I agree with any of the policies his his um, team and some of the um, candidates in her area were pushing anti-abortion things, women's rights. And this is the bit from it where she's like, no, it's time for me to have a voice. And the other thing, just from a security so standpoint, you think people- Taylor Swift comes out against Trump. I don't care if they write that. I'm sad that I didn't two years ago, but I can't change that. I'm saying right now that this Hold is her. something that I know is right, and you guys, I need to be on the right side of history. Taylor, and if he Taylor, doesn't win, that at least I, I, at least I tried. Taylor, here's the here's the problem. I just want to read you what I wrote, and I'm going to try to start. I just really want you to know that this is important to me. I and this totally is something agree that, have you, with have you. you just- And I just think, imagine having a group of men around you, some of them your own family, telling you you can't speak up against something you're passionate about. And I think no matter what you think of Taylor, I think that would be so incredibly hard to be worried you'd lose your entire fan base just for standing up for women's rights. So I think it's quite significant that she's come out today. There's been millions of people already liking it. Um, I think it's, yeah, I think it's a huge step for Taylor to to say that she endorses Kamala. Carrie and Tommy. Because mm-hmm. I'm going to start with something that's obvious, but then I didn't know all the details to mm-hmm. it. Um, this week celebrates um, Shabuzi's The Bar Song. So what's called The Bar Song? A Bar Song. A Bar Song. Not the one. It's not the There's others. There's lots of them, but this is. A Bar Song. And in brackets, tipsy. Yes, we're getting to that. <laughs> um, is eight weeks at number one of the wow. US Billboard country music chart. Mm-hmm. And um, did you know that it is, of course, it's not a remix of Jay Kwan's Tipsy. No. It's an interpolation. What does here, interpolation here is just mean? Just before it, it, he put it out, this is uh, Shabuzi describing what he's done. It's kind of crazy because I low-key flipped the Jay Kwan song into a country song. That shit, that shit about to go crazy. I'll turn the Jake Kwan joint into, into some country s***. <laughs> Y'all gonna see. So, of course, if you remember uh, Jake Kwan's Tipsy. Everybody in the club get tipsy. Everybody in the club get tipsy. Everybody in the club get tipsy. And how did he make it into a country song? Well, you've heard it. Everybody in the bar get tipsy. Everybody I don't know which version I like better. But I didn't know that not only have they performed um, the song together in their own kind of style, but also that Jay Kwan gets a huge um, chunk of the royalties. Really? Yes. Well, that's nice to know because often people remake songs and I think, do the others get a look in? Yeah, well, um, Jay Kwan has said uh, we were duly compensated. I love it. And, of course, Tipsy has had a comeback because of it. And here is both of them performing together. So I thought we'd get a bit of shabuzi on. A hey, bar song. Carrie and Tommy. Driving you home for your Wednesday, Arvo. It's Carrie Bigmore and Tommy Little. Because are you ready to have your mind blown? <sighs> Always. What have you got? Are you sure? Mm-hmm. Put a helmet I'm on. I'm here. Put a helmet okay, on. Okay, I'm ready. This will go yep. everywhere. Stack hats on. My God, put tarps up on the walls. This is going to be a mess. So mm-hmm. I looked up the most impressive um, stationary item inventions. Why? <laughs> Because why are you get ready that? for my big clothes. Okay. So here are the type of things that came up. Creative apple shaped sticky notes. So they're like, like post the notes in the shape of an apple. Is it blowing your mind? Not really. Not no, me neither. What about this? Um lollipop, cute lollipop, but they're gel pens in there. So you take the lollipop top off and it's actually a pen. Oh my kids like that. 
but not, not blown no, my mind. me neither, because me I neither. I mean, as a kid, it was mind-blowing when your stationery smelt. Oh, scratch and sniff stuff. Oh, oh yeah. that blew my mind. Other kids you saw. In fact, it still excites markers. me when I come across my kids' oh, ones. Sniffy, sniffy. Yeah. I oh, know. That's yeah. just weird. <laughs> Um, it's got scratch and sniff stuff mm. is great. Mm. And the, and do you mean the markers that smell as well? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, how about this? Um, this is a, a nightlight that's got like a piece of glass on it that you can write a message on it. That is very cool because yes. I can't sleep at night because my to-do list is going around in my head so I could get it off my mind and just write it on the nightlight. But then I could just write it on my phone, couldn't I? No, but you, but if your partner's like, if you're going out for the night and you want to write, hey, love you, schnookums, nim, 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 nim. <clears throat> you could do schnookums. that. Yep. Or you leave a note on it. Yeah. Well, you can leave whatever you want. Love it. it. Isn't it? Not bad. Um, did it blow your mind though? No, uh, not really. Well, guess what? What? See what I'm doing with that list? Yep. That's from the internet and I don't need that stuff because the thing that is blown my mind and soon to eviscerate your cranium over there, is this little item I got here. That looks like a, what is that, a pen? What specifically is it? I don't know, a blue pen? It's a highlighter. That's not a highlighter, is it? It's too little to be a highlighter. Guess what, Kate? Like a highlighter pen. Oh, That's, it is. Oh. It's a little highlighter. Yeah. Want to have a go with it over there? Have a go. Sure. There Doesn't go. look particularly mind-blowing. Yeah. There's, hat, there's their usual negativity. Doesn't the smell. No, no, it does. Just like some, suck it up his boom. And I'll like some, highlight some stuff. Clean as yes, a whistle. it glides on. Okay. Yeah. Now, you stop? Just give it's that a second. Now, though, give I that a second or two to, to, to dry. Mm-hmm. You, what did you say? That's annoying. No, because I need to use this piece of paper for but our work. And now I've highlighted a bit. Imagine if there was a way you could just erase it. Imagine that. Oh, my God. Would that blow your mind? It's Carrie, got an eraser on it. see that, see the other bit of the pen? The, the tip thing on the other end hmm? that looks like an eraser on the top of a pencil. Have <gasps> a go. Can you erase a... this? Oh my God. Got her. That is insane. Bye it's bye gone. Skull. And it hasn't taken the words with it. No. That is so cool. The words you mean, the words you highlighted. It's yes, like it's taken, it's only removed the highlighter. How does that work? By friction. That's why it's called a friction. Oh my God. A friction. A friction what? That is insane. A friction highlighter. Oh. What have we been doing? How long have these been around? I don't why know. have I been using highlighters for all these years? I, mean, I don't know. Mm. I only just got told about it the other day. And the guy is there told one me, for pens? Because at the moment, all you do with a pen is, is um, Never what's it enough. called? Um, Never white enough, out is it? it? Never enough. Well, I just feel like that would be a better use because highlighter you normally do but want can to highlight. We just it, have one day it would be. where we're happy with this amazing. Have you thing. checked that these friction people don't remove pen? I reckon they might. Oh. I reckon they've got more than one um, item they do. I was happy enough with having my mind blown once. You Let's know? see. Oh, pilot friction erasable ball pen. They do. There we go. Double blown. Yeah. Blown oh. Twice in one break. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Follow Carrie Bitmore and Tommy Little on socials at Carrie Tommy Show. Bye. Bye. Carrie and Tommy are signing off and hitting the road, but your next adventure could be just beginning. Campify makes it easy. Hire a caravan or a camper van for your dream getaway. Book your next camping holiday at campify.com.au.